Have we done a primary in here? Hey, what's up? Today we're going to go over a couple quick tips from uh, a video I have of forcing a door uh, inside of a residential fire. Um, so I'm just going to kind of look through the video with you and just give you a couple quick tips uh, based on my experiences. Uh, again, this fire uh, occurred in a single family dwelling, a detached house. Um, and at the point in the fire when we encountered the door and ended up forcing it, it's actually kind of on the uh, uh, trailing end of the fire. Most of the fire has already been knocked down. The searches have been completed. We're in the overhaul stage. And at this point, we're really just forcing the door to gain access to the rear porch in the back of the house where a lot of the fire was located. So let's take a quick look. So as we come up uh, and size up the door, what we have is uh, from our vantage point, basically what's going to be an outward opening door. Um, of course, if you were on the other side of the door, the door actually opens into the house. But since we're on the inside of the house and we are um, looking to get to the back of the house, this is actually an outward opening door from our perspective. We can tell that because it's going to swing towards us. So we can see here that at one point this door basically contained uh, inset glass panels. Most of them have been broken out at this point by heat from the fire. Um, but one thing that's interesting to note here is that the lock on the door is double keyed, right? So we see two locks on the door. We see a tubular deadbolt at the top and then we see just a standard knob lock at the bottom. Uh, and a lot of times we're used to a tubular deadbolt having a thumb latch on the inside of the door that can be quickly opened by hand. Um, you can see on this door here, it does not have uh, a thumb latch like that. So it's keyed on both sides. So that means if it's locked and you don't have the key, we're gonna end up having to force the door. So the first thing you wanna do, of course, in any forceful entry operation is the old try before you pry. You see us try the knob here uh, to try and get the door open and the door is in fact still locked. Um, we even actually kind of reach our hand through um, to make sure that there's no way from the other side of the door to kind of unlock anything and of course there wasn't. So we're going to end up moving into our forcible entry techniques. So there's uh, a group of three of us here, myself and the inside team from Ladder 1. Uh, we identify that we're going to force the door. So one of the things that uh, the tool that I usually carry when I'm in a division supervisor position, which is what I was doing here, um, is I usually carry a 24 inch Lund bar. Uh, the 24 inch Lund bar is basically exactly the same as your standard Haugen bar, except it is six inches shorter. And uh, I talk about that more in some of my other videos about my battalion chief workflows. Um, but, you know, normally in a division position, I am not uh, doing as much forceful entry um, as the standard truck company, so I just carry a shorter tool. So um, the other firefighter on ladder one has your standard 30 inch pro bar. Um, and at this point, um, for, for whatever reason, I actually don't recall why we don't have the striking tool or we don't have an ax with us. So that's kind of a good point to talk about. Um, you hear different points of view when you talk to different firefighters. Uh, you come up to a house fire, you have a, a set of irons, you know, your Halligan bar and your striking tool, typically an ax. You know, there's a discussion out there about once you get through the front door, you know, do you still bring the axe with you? Um, because admittedly, a lot of times after you get into the house, you don't end up encountering any more doors that need to be forced. And so therefore, you know, when you're inside doing your searches or stuff like that, you're kind of just lugging this axe around married up with your Haugen bar. And that can, of course, be cumbersome and it, you know, can kind of slow down your search a little bit, right? So some firefighters will choose to break the irons apart at the front door and leave the axe at the front door. And the pro of that is, of course, you know, more mobility or, or, you know, more ease of movement when you're doing your search or being able to kind of more easily use that tool to extend yourself off a wall during an oriented search. But of course, the con of that is if you do encounter a, another door inside of the house or inside of the building you need to force, well, now you don't have your dedicated striking tool. And so that's the position we're in here. Fortunately, um, you know, the interior doors are likely to be less formidable than the exterior doors, and, but there's no guarantee in that, you know, especially if you get into SROs or single room occupancies, or if you're in an apartment building or you're in a commercial building, 
you can encounter some pretty heavily fortified doors. But if you do encounter, um, you know, your less fortified, more standard residential door like the one we're dealing with here, then, you know, not having a regular striking tool like an axe or something like that, you know, you might be able to get away with that like we did here and just use another halogen bar as a striking tool. So, you know, of course, there's going to be a significant difference in the amount of force delivered from the head of a halogen bar versus the head of an eight pound axe. But, you know, again, depending on how heavy that door is, you know, you might be able to get away with it. So that's what we're dealing with here is using a halogen bar on a halogen bar um, to uh, strike that tool and get it set into place. So you can see here, um, the first thing we want to do is we've identified that we have an outward door and we've identified the number and location of locks. We have the two locks, tubular deadbolt on the top, knob lock on the bottom, very common residential configuration. And in most cases, what we want to do there is place our tool in between the two locks, right? So now when you're placing a tool on a lock, it's kind of like a catch 22, right? The closer that you go to the lock, the more force you will put on the lock because the tool is right there next to it. And so all the leverage and force that you're exerting is going to be done directly on the lock. Now, the, the, the downside of that is the closer that you are to the lock, the more resistance you're going to meet in setting the tool. So if you're dealing with an average to below average lock or like, you know, resistance level, then this is probably a non-issue. But if you're dealing with something that's really heavily fortified or like a really solid door or something like that, sometimes things can be so tight next to the lock that you can't make any progress. And so there, you've got to start out going a little further away from the lock to kind of, you know, get your tool in the door, get things started. And then as you, um, you know, damage the frame, damage the door, damage the lock, whatever, as you make progress, begin working yourself closer to the lock, right? So, you know, here with a pretty standard, um, you know, configuration, the lock's not too bad, the door's pretty light or whatever, we're just gonna go between those multiple locks, right? So another thing you notice is the placement of the tool. Another conversation that's out there and, and people are real polarized on it is when we're forcing an outward opening door, are we gonna set the forks or are we gonna set the ads, right? So here we're setting the ads, right? And that is generally what I am a fan of um, enforcing outward opening doors and you know uh, really the primary reasons for that are number one when I've set the ads I get up to 180 degrees of leverage because I can pull that bar all the way around whereas if you set the forks you're really restricting yourself to a maximum of 90 degrees of leverage and also one of the things that we get into when forcing outward opening doors particularly metal commercial outward opening doors um, is making sure that we don't skin the door. And that's an entire different discussion about how to make sure we avoid that. But just my personal experience is that I feel like I'm better in avoiding skinning the door um, with setting the uh, ads rather than setting the forks. Now, of course, this is a wood door, so you, know, you can't really skin a wood door. But you know, I, I just kind of apply the same technique that I would apply on any other outward opening door here. So again, you know, whether to set the forks uh, or the ads, it's kind of a polarized conversation. There's my two cents on it. But so here we're gonna set the ads in between the multiple locks. So um, pretty simple, I'm just using my halogen bar as a striking tool. And um, you know, I'm using the back of the halogen bar, the back side of the ads, the flat surface there as the striking surface. You know, some guys might try to use the top of the tool as a battering ram. I guess you can do that, but it requires, I think, a little bit more space. Anyway, my, my personal preference is, you know, when doing something like this, just to use the back of that ads as the striking surface. So you can see the next step in, in really any outward opening door operation is that once we get the ads driven into the door and we get it to the door stop, then uh, the tool is not going to go any further once you hit that door stop. So what you have to begin doing is angling the, the tool out a little bit. And this is really applicable whether you're using the ads or whether you're using the forks, but you've got to start curving that tool around the back of the door so it comes off of the door stop and goes between the frame and the door, right? So that's kind of, that's probably one of the finer points of forcible entry is having that finesse of knowing how much to pull. Because if you don't pull enough, you're not gonna make any progress, but if you pull too much, you're gonna pop the tool right out of the door and you're probably gonna to have to start back over again. So you kinda of wanna, 
you know, just pull on that a little bit, but the guy on the bar, the Halligan firefighter, that's going to have to be their finesse piece there, right? So we angle the tool out a little bit, we get the, the tip of the ads off the doorstop, and then we can drive the tool around the back of the door. Angle it a little more. Pull it towards me a little bit. There you go. All right. So you can see here, uh, now we really have the tool set in the door, right? We have the ads buried behind the back of the door, pretty much up to the neck of the Haugen bar. Um, and once you're in this position here on an outward opening door, you've pretty much got the door open or, or you're going to get at least that lock. It's just a matter of applying um, enough leverage or force to the tool, right? But that's the power position of the ads is getting that that adds all the way behind the back of the door. And then from here, you really have two options, right? So you can work the bar, you know, pull it out towards you and kind of work that in an arc um, like this, right? Or you can work that bar up or down, right? And if you work that bar up or down, a couple of things you want to think about, right? So number one, on this door here, this door is going to open out and towards our right. So a door that opens out and towards our right if we set our ads, you're going to end up having the pike facing upwards, right? So when you talk about going up or down, you know, it's not really going to be very efficient to go up because within just a couple inches of moving your tool, you're going to end up with the pike hitting the door. And that might sound like it would add force, but, you know, from a physics perspective, it actually takes a lot of force away. Now, if you just need distance, right? Like if a lot of the lock is already given and it's not really a matter of force and you just need more distance to pull the lock or the door off of the frame, then yeah, okay, going up and, and hitting the ads, or I'm sorry, the pike against the, the frame, that might do something. But you know, if you're trying to create gap between the frame and the door, then going down is actually gonna use that you know width of the ads to spread the door. And you can actually kind of work the tool up towards the lock if you need to, right? Or if you've got a good bite on the door and you've got a good enough force, you come just out towards your body and across. That's where you get that 180 degrees that I was talking about earlier and you pull the door um, open there, right? So this is one of those spots where you want to be really careful that you're not um, being, you know, you're not getting ahead of yourself and you're not pulling that door just or pulling that bar with too much force because if you if you pull it too much in a jerky motion, a lot of times that's where you can pull that tool out of the door. And again, if you did need to extend leverage, like, so the good thing here is I have a Halligan bar in my hands. So one of the things I could do if we needed to extend leverage is, is do that maneuver where I link the two forks of the Halligan bar together um, to add more leverage or force on that tool, you know. But again, this is a pretty lightweight door. Um, so we didn't really need to do that here. Now we have our door open and, you know, typical, just, you know, maintain some door control. You know, a good thing, and I know this isn't really an intense fire scenario or anything, but it's just always good to keep in your mind. Um, you know, anytime you open that door, you, you whether it go, comes out towards you or whether it's going in, you want to have control over that door. So if there are fire conditions behind it, you know, you can uh, assess those, you can control the flow path, you can make sure you're masked up, got water in your line or whatever. You know, when the door is an outward opening door like this, I mean, the great thing about that is, you know, as the door comes towards you, usually your body is going to be like a natural, you know, stop to make sure that door doesn't open in an uncontrolled manner. One thing to be careful of, um, if you're dealing with like a commercial door that might have like a slam, a slam latch or something like that, that when you control that door, also control it from going back closed. Cause I've seen sometimes where you pop that door and then it closes itself and like that slam latch or whatever catches again and you gotta go back into forcing it some more. So there you go, a couple tips on forcing the door. Hope you got some good stuff. If you like that video, be sure to check out our channel for more videos with plenty of other tips. Or if you really wanna dive into stuff, you can check out our online courses available now for immediate access on our website. We have a great four hour class on the uh, operations for the inside and outside team of the aggressive truck company. You can find more information on that and the other courses in the description below. Or our bread and butter is hands-on training and in-person seminars. If you'd like to talk about bringing us to your department or your next event, the contact information is also in the description below. Thanks for watching. Till next time, stay combat ready.